Welcome to another Lumion live stream tutorial guys. This is Chris Welton from C Welton Design and this is going to be a really quick tutorial talking about keyboard shortcuts in Lumion. I know a lot of people don't really know that they even exist or they might know the basic ones and I might know some ones or there might be some ones I didn't know about that I can help out with. And so that's what we're going to cover in this one and we're going to start off in the form which I also released a tutorial talking about the form. I recommend looking at it. So right now this we're in Lumion 8.5 when I'm making at the time of this recording things might change in the future but this is the most up-to-date and I will send a link to this as well in the description this is the most up-to-date list of keyboard shortcuts in Lumion and we're going to cover them really quickly hopefully you learn one hopefully one helps you out saves you some time in the future and let's let's get off so I'm gonna have this on the side for me. Well, let's. I'm gonna set this. We'll split this up. So I'm sure all of you know. Lumion's basic movement works off of WASD. Hopefully, you guys have figured that out. It also works with the up and down arrow keys. But it's kind of a game engine works kind of like gaming. If you've ever played a video game, you know WSD is. That's, you know, W forward, S back, A left, D right. And I've heard this is flipped up and down. E is down in Lumion. Q is up. Some games I've played, it's the opposite of that. But I've kind of learned from Lumion. So you're used to it. So that's all covered here. Now, maybe what maybe you guys don't know is that you can also control the speed of moving around in here. Sometimes people move by scrolling up, you know, through the mouse here, right-clicking to aim. But if you're moving this way, you get a little bit more precise control. It moves at this certain speed. Now, if we hold space bar while doing this, we get a much slower speed. This is really good for positioning your camera more precisely instead of just jerking around like this so I should probably learn from that when I'm making these tutorials I move way too fast so that's the spacebar now shift is the opposite it makes it fast and if you combine the both of them you get super speed which seems kind of ridiculous here but when you're moving around a large scene I kinda of wish it were faster it's like we're flying shift space shift so speed and the forward, back, up and down controls. Another cool thing, as explained here, pan camera. You can also hold the middle mouse button to kind of just pan around, aim with the right click. But you can also do, you know, panning. All that works the same way as well through the shift and space. Now, what's also kind of nice is to be able to teleport. It's not, you know, kind of a keyboard shortcut. It seems like I'm just going over the basics of navigation. But I didn't know about this for a while. See that little cursor in the center? What we can do is double right click on it and we'll jump right to that point. Fastest way of moving around our scene, but it gets kind of tricky if you don't have hills or something to aim towards. It doesn't work if you point at the sky usually. I'll be right there. Double right click. So. Very useful ways of navigating around scenes. I work with some really large scenes, and that's kind of crucial. You want to move around. All right, so also, you know, I'm expect you guys to memorize all these things. I'm gonna give you guys this link, and you can look at it yourself. But you're gonna just see. Hopefully, you just watch this, and you're like, "Well, I don't need that. Don't need that. That sounds important. That's that's the key here." So we have Control H. So sometimes we tilt around and we want to get a nice even camera angle, but I'm not sure if I'm flat. Hit Control H, and that'll reset you to level. To be honest, I did not know about this one. I just learned about it just right here with you guys, and I could use this more often. Control H sets it to height, and this one is tricky. The orbit, which is really useful often especially when you're sending camera scenes the tricky part is you need to work with this cursor and needs to point somewhere on the ground then you let go and you hit O 
then you hold right click and you will orbit around that point. You have to do every step kind of trick like uh, with some space. If your scene is really heavy and your frame rate is really low, sometimes I notice it doesn't quite register as quickly. And it won't work obviously if you aim at not the ground. You can't orbit around the sky. But if I set here, then hold o, o and right click, you have to hold O down. Then to let go of right click, hold O, then right click again. Try it. Some some people have a hard time with it and some people just get it. It's pretty useful for kind of moving around your scene. So O for orbit. Makes sense. Talked about teleporting. Okay, so let's get to the F keys here. So if you guys haven't played with the settings here, you, you probably have when <laughs> your scene gets really heavy. But we have editor quality. Low, medium, high quality, super high quality. Notice that there's an F. F1, F2, F3, F4. Now this will automatically you know, shift the quality in here. And you'll start to see it in shadows and reflections. I'm not going to go over it in this tutorial, exactly what each does. But you hit F1, your, your frame rate should go up a bit. This is a very pretty light scene, so you're not seeing too much of it. Things are going slow. Just know you can do that really quite easily. You can also change the resolution if you want to, if you're really desperate. I haven't actually gotten too much success out of that, but if you're if you're chugging, your hardware just isn't quite handling it, just know you can adjust these settings here. But these ones are very easy. F1, 2, 3, 4. One's low, F4 is higher, so quite easy to remember. So F5 is really important. It's quick save. That will create a session. It's saving right now. Depending on your hard drive setup and everything, this could be faster or slower, the size of your scene. It's still very much worth it because right now Lumion doesn't have exactly an auto save. So if anything were ever happen, Lumion crashes, Windows crashes, you just something goes wrong. Um, all your materials and model stuff is always auto-saved, but things you do in Lumion, I talked about this in another tutorial, uh, you could lose all that if you're not careful. So it's always good to hit F5 every once in a while. You know, it's <laughs> purposely like make yourself hit it on accident. Because what that does is when we go to load, load scene, it kind of creates this last quick save. We just created that right there. So you want that. Remember that, quick save, F5. Okay. Now, F7 does terrain quality. Lumion has a certain range that it'll render out. And then I usually don't have. The terrain usually isn't the thing slowing down my scene, but this is just one other option you can do to speed things up. Now, I'm going to skip F8 for a second and do jump to F9, which is uh, probably the one I use the most. It's the trees, the level of detail, LOD of trees. I'm sure you've noticed as you zoom far away from Lumion, Lumion turns the trees into real basic looking things, and these ones do not look good. So I highly recommend keeping this on by default if your computer starts to lag, because trees can get heavy. I like to add a lot of trees myself. But if you want to see what it's going to render like, Lumion will always render it at full quality, and F9 will show all the trees. But if it's slowing down, you know, that's something you, you turn on. So the, try to keep the LEDs going, and then you can get a preview here. F11 is it just hides all the user interface, so you can just fly around without anything in there. It's good for presenting to clients or just getting a real full scope of your scene here. Let's see if we can wind this out. I don't need all of that space. Alright, and then there's a back button. Play back, or you hit F11 again. Now F12. Sorry, it took me a second. I, I. I think I remember using this, but I don't use it enough. See, I, I'm learning a bunch with you guys. Drag model. Oh, 
Whoa. Sorry, this is. I probably should have practiced this one. This is a H keeps the height. R lets you rotate. So I think I'm just pulling this object up here. Let's. Oh, I know what it is. So this was kind of implemented before. I, th I remember this was kind of brought in. I might be wrong, but I thought this was brought in before we had this move mode where we can grab all objects at once. Usually you were limited by whatever scope, like trees. If you go to F12, that's what it does. It lets you basically just move anything. Sorry, it took me a, a second to figure out what that was. If I can undo enough to go back, maybe, maybe. Look at that. Who said Lumi has no undos? <laughs> it's like they're adding them slowly. Okay, so F12 means grab anything mode. I, I forgot about that. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to cover was it has to do with lights. Um, let's go ahead and make this evening. It's a little too dark. So say I want to add a light onto this tree. Here we got a light going. We're gonna point it up at the tree as best as I can. Let's not let's see. Let me try this one. I'm trying to find a wet way to showcase what this does. So Lumion does not take the time to actually really. OK. So that light is sitting right there, and it's being clipped by this plane here. So what's showing is a perfect circle in here, like it's going through it. But what it will render is actually like this. There's that plane clipping it here. I wish I had a better example. but. Basically, Lumion preserves some frames by not doing this, but when you're trying to be precise in editing, it's important to, to hit F8 to really show what your lights are going to look like when you render. It's important to know, and maybe people don't understand that. Lumion kind of saves some time on lights, some render time, so hit F8 to get full preview. All right, really important one is be able to load and save camera viewpoints on the fly. This is super useful, especially if you have a giant scene and you don't want to fly across it every time. You can create teleporting points. So it works with Control and Shift. So if we do Control 1, we get that camera snap. And what we actually did is we created that angle here. So let's do one for sticks. So that saves it there. And so that's control to create and shift toggles in between them. Actually really useful. I wish I used this more. So that's how that works. So oh, I'm not going to go over everything on this list because I don't quite feel it's just a keyboard shortcut. There's some things when you place objects, if you hold control, it'll place 10 of them kind of randomly. Um, v, v will do random size as you click. Control V will do randomized 10. It, it, there's a lot of little tips and tools in here. I, I like I said, I don't think I'm gonna cover all of these. But let's go to okay. A quick selection of move, size, rotate, change height. So I kind of wish I did this more myself. Here's my object. I can switch straight to height, or I can hit M and it moves to move. Or actually. Move, yeah, move is M. Move H, we'll switch it to height. 
hold hold it. All right, so you can tell I don't use this enough. R, hold, rotate. L, scale it. Now, what is really important I use is M and N. It'll lock them on the axis in Lumion. M and N. So when you're placing things precisely, so you do Alt M. So that's their thing is Alt. That's how you copy something. You hold Alt. That will create the exact same size. It won't randomize it. You hit Alt and hold Shift. It'll lock its lock its uh, height, which is really useful. So we had this up in the sky. We want its copy to be up in the sky. You hold Alt, and hold Shift. Now G will snap things to the ground, which automatically already wants to do. There we go, snapping to our model here. I could keep going F this. Okay, F's another precise. They've been added a, a couple of these, I think. Uh, another small thing you could do so if I aligned all of these objects together this is like a 40 animation we have multiple models in the same the same exact origin to align them you can toggle up and down to grab each one of them that's important now it kind of gets into other things But I'll leave that to this one. I just want to cover kind of the basics. Again, I'm going to link in here. You can get, in, you can really dive into here. There's a lot of great ones I didn't quite cover in here. I just kind of feel like I've covered them in other tutorials, and they kind of, I think they belong probably better in other tutorials. Like there's some mass move control ability. I recommend looking at my mass move tutorial. I'll cover a lot of those things, adding, holding control, add points, and everything. So those, those are ideas of. Um, keyboard shortcuts I um, hope you learn something new uh, I hope that you guys can use them and save some time and frustration Lumion's UI can be can be a little bit uh, clunky sometimes having to switch through things if you're not using keyboard shortcuts so there's no no custom keyboard shortcuts at this time I don't know if that's something that might be added later I don't know but there is quite a bit of key keyboard shortcut functionality that I'm sure a lot of people didn't know about. I just, in this tutorial, I just think I learned about three of them or just remembered three of them. And thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to do a couple more little small things here. The small things count. Anything, if you guys live and work in Lumion, these little things will, will save your life. Maybe not your life, but it will save you a lot of frustration. And I hope that my tutorials are helping. Please like and subscribe, and until next time, guys. If you have any other ideas that you'd like me to cover, even if they're little small things or workflows, please leave it in the comments. <laughs>